Hi, everybody. Mark Horner, Beyond 90 Seconds, joined by my friend, uh, I want to say colleague, because it feels like we're, I don't know if it's working or playing together. We really enjoyed uh, bringing you news and nature, wildlife. It's Christian Zasa. He's in just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Surrey. Oh, just a second. I need to correct that, and I've got a YouTube volume. Christian is not. <laughs> Christian is not in Surrey. Absolutely he's, not. No. He's absolutely not. That's his primary home. I got to get the facts yes, straight. Yes, Come yes. on, Horner. Christian is over at Okanagan Lake, where he's That's been correct. busy and talking to me all night long. It's been a long <laughs> night. But Christian, you've been out and you've been um, photographing and shooting video of the fire damage. And I've edited about 10 minutes of your, of your um, primarily video from two different cameras, as well as some of your photography. And I thought we'd go ahead and just get right to it because this is really the first look. And I know for you, um, it was quite quite dramatic to be uh, in a position where you're so close to the aftermath of the fire and see things. I don't. I think you said you've never seen anything like it before. Completely correct. I, I, I've never seen anything like that uh, before, uh, Mark. And I didn't even know what to expect because so far I'd only looked from the other leg side and I didn't know the area that well. So with my long lens, I looked across and at that time we saw the planes do, do the job of the firefighting. But this is exactly what it looked like when I, when I walked through, yes. So we're going to see a couple of minutes, just over two minutes of this type of, you know, in the woods, in the wilderness, getting a feel for the terrain, the landscape, so much of it. Um, is blackened, and then we're going to get into some really close-up footage that you shot of actual structures that are no doubt total losses, vehicles that are, well, there's nothing much left of them. Um, what's going through your mind as you're seeing this up close for the first time uh, Friday night? I, I mean, it's very shocking when you actually walk through it. It's like walking through through a forest and desert at the same time. And what's, what's so surprising, if you look carefully, you can see uh, that the, the that the fire uh, the, the the wind completely controls of course the fire which we know but it's what is so astounding is to see it's really like very, very you know very distinct segments where the fire came down and right next to it there's nothing it's uh, yeah there there you can see some of the structural damage to to telephone lines uh, so that's yeah. So and this looks like there. You can see the road down there. You can see right, that that's West there. Side Road. That's, yeah, that's Okanagan Lake, and you correct. you have your summer home, your new summer home yes. at La Casa Cottage Resort, just south of here. So you that's were allowed correct. to drive north. And Friday, that's it's correct. the first time that um, people could actually drive into that area. Things have opened up, right? That's completely correct. That's exactly like that. And of course, we first respect the residents who went back, and then a few hours later, when there was no traffic, I I I went in, which was in the evening. That's correct. Yes. So um, a location of, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it, I'm in the Seattle area, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly, but we've um, heard mentioned several times of Killiney Beach, if I'm saying it correctly, you're in that area now, right? Yeah, that's completely correct. I, I'm i probably uh, yeah, just a few miles south of this uh, this area that, that you're seeing right now, yes. So that's where you're at right now in La Casa, you're just a few miles south of yes. what we're looking at, and this is Killiney Beach then? Yes, it's south of Killiney Beach, actually. That was so surprising. So it's it's closer to our side. And this this was the structural damage that I that I found there. And you can see right, I mean, it's uh, it's horrible to see this this complete structural damage that uh, that I, I took here. I think that was with my iPhone, actually. I had several several cameras, but this one was taken with the iPhone. And 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 um, I don't even know what some of some of this is or what it was. Uh, and then what's so astounding is, yeah, there's right next to it, there's nothing and there's a house, as you can see right down there. If you look straight down, that was right my through intention. the trees. That's it. Uh, just right there. It's completely uh, uh, untouched, basically. So, you know, that's how crazy, crazy the fire uh, penetrated some of the homes into right some coming the down the slope kind of like fingers if you will yeah, like if fingers. You... that's a good description mark right so there like, you go. in the distance they're untouched right here total loss yes 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 that's right so i know that um also driving around tonight you saw um some wildlife and it's very mm. common for wildlife to be displaced especially when you have a fire of this size and this magnitude that traveled quite a distance to even get to this point um 
we're going to see some of your dash cam video just very shortly here. And included in that dash cam video, uh, the very first shot, you, you saw a bear just on the side of the road, the right side of the road tonight, right? Yes, it was. Uh, I mean, I know that we have bears in, 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 in our area, but I'd never seen one. And uh, that, that was very close. Actually, the bear was very close to, to this area. Obviously, the wildlife, and that's what nobody talks about or hardly anybody talks about, is this disturbance of, of wildlife. I saw lots of deer and I saw this bear wandering around. And um, yeah, so it's, it's tough, Mark. Um, you have spent considerable time since you've moved up there, uh, mm-hmm. live streaming, uh, showing an osprey nest. And I know you wanted to see if that nest was still around. Unfortunately, due to the heat, um, the, the chicks didn't survive uh, prior to the fire. It just got so hot. Okay, here's our driving shot. But that nest is still there, you told me earlier tonight. Yeah, that was a big relief because, I mean, all these nests are right next to the road. This is the west side road, by the way, traveling north. Yeah, that's right, traveling north. And here's where you just saw the bear. And I don't know if people could hear me, but I zoomed in here to repeat that moment. And there it is on the right side of the road. Yes, there you You can see it. it. Yes. It screws off to the right. Yeah, that's the first time I see it. It's very difficult to see by the, from the dash cam. So I'm, I'm glad you zoomed <laughs> zoomed in like that, so you can actually just make out the bear. That's quite quite amazing, actually, Mark. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you and I were talking on our walkie-talkie yeah. app, which is called Voxer, and uh, you were telling me, "Oh my goodness, there's a there's a bear." And um, so I looked for it. And I heard that you made the comment, and I found the moment. Now this is a fire station. Exactly. And in the back, you see you see the um, the part of the fire actually, and some of this is of course a. Um, uh, prescribed fire right uh, so so that's all in, that's now uh, th- there it is there it is now that is uh, uh, now um, categorized as as controlled fire so Christian um, you can see it up there on the hillside I noticed that in a few of these driving shots we could still still see smoke and is it your uh, it's p- very quite possible that could be part of the, the controlled burn or prescribed burn that's go- still going on in some areas there right yeah, that's that's right. Uh, it, this is very close to a place called um, Valley of the Sun. Yeah, that's right. That's Valley of the Sun on the left, and these, uh, yeah, as we as we turn around here, that's Valley of the Sun, uh, and and back there we're driving towards Killney Beach at the moment. When you've joined us, for the folks who don't know, Christian has been shooting several stories and sharing with this channel and coming on live. He's been evacuated twice, correct me if I'm wrong, Christian, from La Casa, which is just off this uh, this road right here, West Side Road. So he would go back to his home just outside of Vancouver in Surrey, go back and forth, back and forth. Um, He's back there again tonight. But just for those wondering, Christian's home did, in fact, in fact, your whole neighborhood survived, though you could clearly see the glow from the fire from your neighborhood. Oh, absolutely, Mark. Uh, we, we, we could, and I, I took a lot of footage uh, from a few miles uh, facing with a camera facing north, right? And in the meantime, fortunately, we've had rain and the temperatures have gone down quite a lot. And it came to a big surprise to everyone, including our friends who could move back to the air. By the way, that's the end. You cannot go further than that. So that's as far north as you can go. That, the main section there... Uh, is still closed to Vernon, and I don't know how much longer it'll be closed. I heard that a lot of the hydro lines are down. Then, of course, some some structures and properties, including the so-called Little Kingdom, which is my favorite shop, wonderful shop, uh, has 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 been burnt down. So we can't enter that part yet. So there, I'm turning around, driving, uh, driving south again. Global News was out there during the day as well and got some footage and posted it to their website in, for, in the form, of course, of a news story. And online, their article says more than 75 structures were significantly damaged in the central Okanagan region. And uh, it sounds like you were very much in the uh, the heart of some yes. of that, that severe you know, toll that the, this fire took. Yes, absolutely, Mark. And I, I, I didn't I didn't really know what to expect. It was surprising because i mean although you see these cars are driving when when i went to the places where the structural damage was i was completely alone and it was it was a very eerie uh, sort of a lonely haunting and and lost feeling that's a really interesting uh bit of information thank you for sharing with it i mean um 
I know how much of uh, you enjoy wildlife. We just touched on a, a moment ago. Um, and it just like the fingers of the fire that came down the hillside, the yes. fingers, the, the, the impact is, has impacted so many realms, business, mm -hmm. tourism, people who have their homes there or their second homes there, wildlife, pets, um, and, and a lot of, some key unanswered questions still that hopefully we'll get some firm answers for, especially the people who are directly impacted, who lost their homes, who have been displaced in terms of what exactly happened at, at the, you know, surrounding the events at the origin of all of this. Yes, I, I, we, at the moment, we know very, very little. There, there's the uh, sign for Kilney Beach, exactly. Right. So this uh, is actually your second camera, or really your yeah. primary camera. This is your Sony. Yeah. Um, earlier, we were seeing footage uh, from a dash cam just a moment ago and prior to that from your iPhone 11, I believe. Yes. Um, so and again, Okanagan Lake, folks, is a very long lake. It runs primarily north south in terms of size. It's a narrow lake relative to, relative to its length. Mm -hmm. um, but Christian gives us a really good uh view of everything along this main road the one road that gets people in and out of this area basically west side road this is the northwest uh, stretch yes. of the lake and you you said you saw where the fire had crossed the road too isn't that right christian yeah so that that's that's obviously the ember from 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 the very strong winds that's very feared uh, that that jumped jumped the road with with ease in some sections and you can see uh properties down there right and that's what these these planes, if you remember, a few weeks ago, you show, saw these planes fighting the fire. That's what they were doing, actually. You know, now I, I get the uh, geography of things that I was only seeing from the other side. And um, I, I didn't know the area so well because we just moved in there. And the first summer we had here was quite horrific, actually, uh, what we didn't expect. And um, now coming to the area, of course, I paid incredible attention to details, which I never did before because I never thought this could happen. Yeah, it's uh, you just made me <laughs> gave me pause because I thought about that, how you had been, you know, going up and down the uh, the opposite side of the lake uh, for a stretch there uh, in the weeks, you know, weeks ago now, um, trying to get a good view uh, as long as it wasn't too smoky outside. You could see across the lake and maybe even see some flames, trees crowning, if you will. Yes. Um, oftentimes it was just too smoky. And then you see the glow from your neighborhood south of the fire. But this is your first time really inside the target that you've been trying to capture during that's, those weeks. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, here, you, typical, you know, you see the the the, 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 the mailboxes here of, of people and uh, right next to it, complete co complete devastation, you know, the, the desert. It's, it's like a forest desert, uh, just dead trees. And um, yeah. And obviously you can see also the firefighters have been doing some work here, whatever they, they, they could. Um, and sometimes you see barbed wire fences just discontinued. You can walk right through and down. Uh, it's 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 really an eerie feeling, Mark. I mean, this is exactly how 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 it looks. You know, I I think I actually managed to capture it exactly the way it is. You see that that's the uh, the, 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 that's the telephone uh, communication that went down and so on that has to be restored. Down there's a, a road that's. Um, from West Side uh, Lake Road, looking down further where the residences are, and they have fortunately those parts were completely intact, like nothing ever happened, right? And then mm -hmm. right next to it, suddenly you have a also complete structural destruction, right? So, yeah, there you you can see there there how abrupt it actually is, right? It's such like you described this very well with with the word finger that's exactly what it is it, it's it's really from it stops from one tree to the next i've seen yeah there you see the house in the background see that house you're right that lit up house and that's right in the middle of it it's it's astounding i don't know what else to say it's absolutely astounding um how 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 um the the you know you're completely dependent on on it's it's almost like a lottery which way the wind blows literally and, yeah and literally and there you can see how hot that it was i mean look look at the wheelbarrow and mm, so on burned so, very hot yeah yeah i had a guest on thursday on horner's corner and she's a disaster um, preparedness specialist and i'm reminded at this moment of how she talked about people who she would um help help assist at mm. the reception centers these centers where displaced homeowners go mm. um 
And she just talked about many stories from the front lines, including people wanting to check their web cameras. You know, is their house still there? What's outside the window? Um, and the camera is no longer working. Is it the power going off or is the house gone? Um, did you, uh, I know you had your security cameras as well. Yeah. What might you be doing the same or differently in that regard going forward? It's a, it's a great question, Mark. I'm probably going to install a, uh, uh, a PTZ, so it's a pan tilt zoom camera on top of my house. That's that's what I want to do. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to have a battery backup, and then furthermore to that, you should probably have two two independent internet lines. Not that that is that that can help, but for the power outage, the power outage is easy to get around because these cameras don't take very much. They don't consume a lot of power. So that part, I you know, I'm an electrical engineer. I understand that very well. I'm a little bit. Um, in, in doubt still how I want to solve the, 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 the transmission part, whether we go to the cell phone signal or whether whether we um, you know hope that the, the that the fiber optical line will still be okay. By the way, this is quite why did I take the fire hydrant? Because I showed that even a fire hydrant in these in these severe circumstances don't help you. You know, it always says an insurance the insurer, the insurance always wants to be sure how far is the fire hydrant from your house. Well, you can see, I mean, sorry to say, but it, it can be completely useless in some cases when, well, when the fire is so strong. Right? Irony of all ironies, the fire hydrant looks unscathed. Yes, I know, Mark. <laughs> it looks like it has a fresh coat of paint on it still. You, you, you know, you know, this is very interesting. I think that the building code needs to be revised. It's ridiculous, actually. The, the, I mean, our house too, in which I'm sitting now, is completely unfit for these type of fires. I mean, amber, you just have, 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 uh, it, it, it's like fireballs be, being thrown, at, thrown at you. They'll completely destroy the house in, in no time. We are absolutely not ready. And, and, and these type of situations will come again, you know, that we, uh, for several reasons, just, just because a, they're natural, uh, fires. That's, that's one reason, reason they are just the way they are. The second is we, we, we are suffering from, from a, um, a global temperature change that, that is also clear. And thirdly, we are also changing the environment as it is. So if you look at all these, these factors, we are going to, you know, this is not going to be our first summer. Maybe we'll have a quiet summer and then we'll have two heavy summers and so on. But I believe the frequency is going to increase and it's going to be our responsibility. The building codes have to change. They have to be more, uh, you know, in Europe, for example, they play, they, they, they build only with bricks, right? That that's what we're used to in bricks. And here everything's made from wood. Uh, well, wood, wood is good. If you have are living in an earthquake zone like Seattle or Vancouver and, and San Francisco and other Los Angeles and so on, uh, that that makes sense. But the Okanagan, for example, doesn't have any earthquakes, so that's where brick would would be a very good option. And for example, if I went to Australia, when I went to Australia and I was, uh, they have had strong. Uh, you, you know, they, they were strongly affected, as you know, New South Wales was strongly affected by incredible wildfires just over a year ago, right? And they have mainly brick uh, buildings, and they also, they, their windows uh, have, have these fire screens, which, which uh, are very useful. So, so that'll make, be a big difference because embers is something nobody can prevent, and they are absolutely... Uh, crazy. For for example, there was someone on a boat in the Okanagan Lake, and he told me just two days ago he was out there in in the 2009 fire. There was a very strong fire in 2009 near La Casa, where the resort where our house is. And he said he was in the middle of the lake, and there was an amber that landed on his boat and started a fire almost. He just threw it over. That's how dangerous it is, right? So it can jump across a lake. You know, make no mistake, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's serious. So we have to change the way we do things. Very interesting. It's, um, it's just recently, my supervisor at work, who is from Mexico, um, was telling me how most of the homes in Mexico are not made with adobe, but in fact are made with, are built with bricks and cement. Mm -hmm. um, that's been that way for a few decades now. And he says that as a result, though they're not in force like this typically, that the homes do much better when it comes to fire than they do up here when you build 
with wood. So um, yeah, I found your comments very, very interesting, Christian. Excellent uh, commentary and and insights. Thank you very much. So um, boy, oh boy, uh, you've gone back and forth between your primary home to the west and and this home where you're at tonight, a lot just off this road that we're looking at. Uh, but you, you, you now that the the fire threat has really come down significantly. Uh, you're staying put for for a while. Is that right? What are you, what are you going to be up to? Um, you could be doing some more photography, video. Um. Yeah, de- definitely, Mark. Tomorrow, I would like to take a look if I have time and the weather's okay. I would like to take a look more at the wildlife side. That's what I want to examine. I want to I want to walk a bit more through through these forest areas uh, with with my camera gear and pay specific attention to wildlife because that is the question that unfortunately very few are asking uh you know of course the human devastation is 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 horrible you know we're not denying that but we need to also understand what's happening to our wildlife in the forest where do they go what happens to them and you know the deer the bears and uh all, all 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 the birds and so on and so on coyotes and and so on they're all part part of our uh, environment and it's very important you know, to, to see to understand what's going on with them. I'll, I'll be interested to, to hear how that gets managed. Um, I was telling you off camera earlier tonight that many years ago when I was a young reporter in central Washington, my very first job at a TV station that no longer exists in Wenatchee, Washington, it was KCWC, right. there had been a, um, a, a really big uh, fire in an area that terrain wise is somewhat similar to what you have there it's because it is upper sonoran desert as well yes and it was um there was in an area known as swakane canyon so this was 1989 1990 actually right right around there and it was a sizable fire but there was so much loss of habitat that the experts said that there had to be a special hunt a uh, special deer hunt and there and there was and loads of deer were killed right i've never forgotten right. that um because of the impact of not having enough uh, the argument was um habitat because of such such loss so i will be very interested to see um what what goes on there and you know i was watching a report friday uh, several hours ago now um from california on the big fire that's going on at lake tahoe and then the it the thumbnail on youtube was all about the bear in the smoke when it was kind of ironic that you're you're you encountering a, you had a bear encounter this evening as well Yes, so, and, and you, you know what's actually interesting, Mark? Uh, wildlife is very uh, sensitive to where humans are. So what they noticed, for example, in La, in the La Casa Resort, when the evacuation uh, was, was, uh, was active, when we had to all leave, that within one day, there were bears running around, coyotes and everything. It was just, it's just remarkable. <laughs> every, every, it's like they're having a party. You know? Everybody's gone. It's just, <laughs> that's, a, that's the wonderful side. <laughs> well, Christian, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your wife's time, Rosanna. She's uh, allowed you to do this, if you will. I don't know if loud's the right word, but I do recognize that uh, we're very much in the middle of the night and you're kind of hunkered down and speaking Fine. quietly by our normal standards. I'm in a sound room, so no one's hearing me, but very kind of you to uh, to take all this work that you've assembled tonight, shove it my way, let me edit it, and uh, together we can share it with uh, people who have an interest in this topic. So, uh, yeah, th- thanks, Mark, so much for editing it. I would not have had the energy to do this because <laughs> this all was, was quite exhausting, actually, to go out. So I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that you put it all together. And, and it, it, I actually saw this now for the first time. I was looking at the videos that, wow, that's really what it looked like. And it's, it's so real. That's exactly how I experienced it. That's what I found so remarkable. You know, it's always when you look at footage that, oh, that's not exactly how I, it was, but it is exactly like that, you know? So thank you for doing that, Mark. I My pleasure. I uh, so appreciate your contributions and look forward to doing some more projects with you. As always, Christian, we've been doing it for years now and it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, um, I know it's a very serious topic, though, and our hearts go out to those of you who might be watching who have been impacted by this or other fires. Um, we hope that good does literally rise from the ashes for you as your story continues to get written going forward. But we're thinking of you. Um, it's a new story to to us. There are stories within 
the, that primary story, but we know that it's all about human beings, humanity, and the uh, impact on, on others as well to include wildlife. So um, thank you so much for giving us your eyes and ears on this story. It's a pleasure to be able to bring it to you. Thank you again, Christian, if you could hold on for just a couple of minutes for a quick post show. And for you, for those of you watching on YouTube or Zoom, thanks so much for, for watching. Take care. Until next time, so long. Thank you.